body stands in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and grateful that you can get today. I just pray that you bless this time together. Bless the teachers and the students as they share with us. And may you be glorified and lifted up and may you have a good time today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, be seated. Well, we are very excited to have you all here today, and we're very excited to hear what the young people have to share to us. And it's just a real privilege to be able to join in something like this, sort of the tip of the iceberg uh, of the experience of the last year. And we, are, we are blessed and privileged to, to live in a country in which we are allowed to have our own school, our church school. And I was thinking about the purpose of education and how it is to prepare us for a productive life as citizens of the place in which we live, and also, maybe most importantly, it prepares us to have a worldview in which we view ourselves as the servants, as instruments of Christ, reaching out to the world around us um, in, in ways that bless those around us in, in real, measurable, beneficial ways. So it's a, it's a blessing to be here, and we're excited to hear what the young people have for us. I'll turn the time over to them at this time.
slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. To fight a fire, or be a doctor too, or build a house, or sail the ocean blue. So many jobs that I might choose. I wonder what I will be. I'll work and learn until it's my turn to find the right job for me. Friends in 
people. We got light and we're gonna let it shine. We are God's little people. God's little people are God's big people sometimes. David was a boy who was sling his hand and old Goliath was a big, big man. He said, David, I'll kill you with my sword. But David brought him down two sides with that rock between his eyes. Cause little David came in the name of the Lord. Well, Lord, I'll give my best to you. There's a lot of things that I can't do. I know I'm not tall and I'm not strong. But for small people everywhere, we got something for the world to hear. And Lord, I'd like to sing this little song. We are God's little people. We got light and we're gonna let it shine. We are God's little people. God's little people are God's big people sometimes. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Shamgar had an ox, so David had a sling. Dorcas had a needle, Rahab had a string. Samson had a jawbone, Aaron had a rod. Mary had some ointment, but they all were used for God. You and I have talents, whether great or small. Gifts that God has freely given unto all. Not for us to bury or with pride display. But in humble service used for Jesus every day. the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each remnant had a box of gold star stickers and a box of grayed out stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones with fine painting and smooth wood always got stars, but if their wood was rough or the paint was chipped, the remnants would give them dots. The talented ones got stars. Some could lift big sticks high above the reds or jump over tall boxes, still others new big words that could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some women had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. 
Marcinella was one of these. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he did, others would gather around him and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wig got shut. The women would give him more dots. Then when he tried to explain why he fell, he would say something silly, and the women would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many great dots, he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water. Then the people would give him more dots. In fact, he had so many great dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots. The wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. A few times he went outside. He hung around the other women who had a lot of dots. He felt better around them. One day he met a woman who had no dots or stars. She was just one. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some wanted Lucia for having no dots, so they would rather give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they'd give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless women how she did it. It's easy. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the women who had no stickers turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear, so Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched all the wooden people scurry around, giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself, and he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to touch his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello. The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little one that asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I don't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't you, care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks, just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you're pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me special? Well, I can't walk fast. I can't jump high. My paint is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on the small and shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you are mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come. I came because I met someone who had no marks. I know. She told me about you. Well, the stickers stay on her. Because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come to see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Remember. Eli says when Mary walked out the door. You are special because I made you, and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought. I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. Don't you see? I was made and formed by God Almighty.
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about you, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of gospel's peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints.
the ant and the dove. The dove saw an ant fall into the brook. The ant struggled in vain to reach the bank, and in pity the dove dropped a blade of straw close, to be, close beside it. Clinging to the straw like a shipwrecked sailor to a broken spar, the ant floated safely to shore. Soon after, the ant saw a man getting ready to kill the dove with a stone. But just as he cast the stone, the ant stung him in the hill, so that the pain would make him miss his aim, and the startled dove flew to safety in the distant wood, the kindness he never wasted. The fox and the stork. The fox one day thought of a plan to amuse himself at the expense of the stork, at whose odd appearance he was always laughing. He must come and dine with me today, he said to the stork, smiling to himself at the trick he was going to play. The stork gladly accepted the invitation, and arrived in good time with a very good appetite. For Janet the fox served soup, but it was set out in a very shallow dish. All the stork could do was sit at the very tip of his bill. Not a drop of soup could he get. But the fox lapped it up easily, and to increase the disappointment of the stork made great show of enjoyment. The hungry stork was much displeased at this trick, <laughs> but he was a calm, even-tempered fellow, son of good and fine to rage. Instead, not long afterward, he invited the fox to dine with him in turn. The fox sure had prompt for the time had been set. The stork served a fish dinner that had a very appetizing smell. It was served in a tall jar with a very narrow net. The stork could easily get the food with his long bill, but the, all the fox could do was lick the outside of the dark jar and sip the delicious odor. And when the fox lost his temper, the stork said calmly, Do not play tricks on your neighbors unless you can send the same treatment to yourself. <laughs> Just as I 
Shining high in the sun, promising many things. How can I reach them up there? So high, I need wind underneath my wings, flying through storms or soaring in sunshine. Who knows what life will bring? God is my helper. God is. Strength, he's the wind underneath my wings. My wings. Heaven is shining beyond the sun. It is my highest dream. It seems so far, but I'll reach it if God is the wind underneath. 
Sure. 